us that way but um thank you for seeing me that way <laughs> so uh, so for me i think um a few months ago it's it's really amazing like they that bridge music just released that song i think i'm saying it right mark k saman or k saman i don't know uh, yeah mark that's the mark. only hindi mm-hmm. one here <laughs> today <laughs> fini <laughs> Ah. <laughs> yeah so uh, finny is only is next level as it is finny yeah, is the queen in the go yes go yeah so so uh, actually so around that time mm-hmm. a little before you know all of that happened uh, i had an encounter of god with like as as a mother i've never experienced him as a mother i have a very loving mother but again i've never equated god or like seen god as a mother I've, Okay father I I got to that stage where I now I can see him as a father but as a mother never but one night like I was in bed again I was just disturbed by a lot of things I was feeling angry and irritated and just a bunch of emotions I was lying in bed late at night and I was over like you know overcome and sort of overpowered by this love which I cannot explain but it was the love of a mother it was it was this embrace you know that the, the kind of love like you can you can you can be so dirty and still uh she will embrace you she will still hug you because that's mm-hmm. what she sees you as you're her child so i felt that embrace from god mm-hmm. i felt this overwhelming love of god presence of god in my room and he even like gave me a lot of verses that went along with that encounter that i had you know of a mother so mm-hmm. I think for me that has kind of um helped me understand probably I'm not a mother yet like I I don't have kids of my own so I don't know what it's going to be like when I have kids like I don't know how it's going to change the way I mm-hmm. am as a as a person like how it's going to change my personality mm-hmm. and all of that but uh ever since he showed mm-hmm. himself to me as a loving mother compassionate mother I think I've been able to apply that. That was not too long ago. I think it was in February or Jan where this happened and I yeah. you know it was not that long ago. So he now when I like when I'm talking to someone and I want to like lash out at them and just say whatever is on my mind because you know a lot of people don't know this about me. I am short tempered. You know, uh Sam would agree to it. I am someone who loses <laughs> my temper very fast but with friends I'm a little more patient but you know if you push my buttons and you get you get on my nerves i can i i'll give it back to you but i think god has been really teaching me about holding back because a mother can you can throw abuse after abuse at her an earthly mother might might mm-hmm. even say it back to you and she might she might beat you for it and yeah. she might do stuff i don't know but but in her heart of hearts she has compassion on you and she just wants to embrace you because she can see beyond your words mm-hmm. she knows what you're going through so i experienced mm-hmm. that i mm-hmm. i was hurt and i was actually like you know sort of portraying my emotions to god like i was irritated and i was telling god like it's so unfair that you're letting me go through this and instead of like saying yeah you deserve mm-hmm. it you know you 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 brought yourself into this like now you get out of it instead of responding with that he responds mm-hmm. with with love and care and embrace so for me in mm-hmm. in lighthouse the church that we're running um i don't know how many people see me as a mother because like you said you know i'm someone who's very like laid back i'm if you come to my house uh i'm not one of those people who's going to cook you a meal am i there yes, yes. okay loud and clear so yeah mm-hmm. so sometimes You, like you know if you are expecting or waiting for me to uh make you a cup of coffee you might not get that uh i might not even offer you a glass of water sometimes because i'm very absent minded i'm not one of those like it does not come naturally to me to uh serve this way okay i i can serve in other ways but not like like serving you a glass of water or something like that so but but instead what i would do is probably sit with you laugh with you talk with you you know play games that's that's what comes naturally to me mm-hmm. so um i don't know mm-hmm. like when i think of a mother i think of like this caring personality who wants to serve <laughs> that does not come to me naturally but i think he's teaching me things <laughs> like you know learning how to respond learning when to be silent you know sometimes mm-hmm. you just need to shut up 
and not say anything you just need to hear them out so you know he he mm-hmm. like i can literally feel times when i really want to say something to someone even even sometimes it's not always negative you know sometimes i want to say something with uh, to someone you know to encourage them but in those moments sometimes god mm-hmm. says be quiet you know just listen or just be silent mm-hmm. sometimes you don't need to say all those things you know mm-hmm. i i recently mm-hmm. lost a student of mine that i taught and i was going through a really tough time and we were we were in varanasi for a mission trip and so you know this happened during that whole time and i i was feeling low but because i am i i show myself as a as a happy person always you know there is this pressure of like keeping it together and also because we are pastors of the church we there is this pressure of like you know uh we we need to always seem like we've got it together we can't lose it at any time you know so i was trying my best not to like break down and cry all the time and uh everybody like everybody in my in our in our group was cheering me up and stuff but then there was one person who texted me saying take your time and i felt like my goodness that was more than enough for me yes every what everybody mm-hmm. said they spoke life over me they they said a lot of things and they definitely helped it definitely comforted me in that moment but i couldn't just forget the memory of it you know i this was a boy that i taught he's close to my heart and i can't just mm-hmm. you know get over it because you say nice things to me to cheer me up but his like what he said to me that day was mm-hmm. take your time jg and i i read that and i was like wow okay you know it just changed for me and and actually after he said that mm-hmm. i kind of accepted the fact that he's gone and i made peace with it mm-hmm. so sometimes god mm-hmm. tells me to say certain things sometimes he tells me to be quiet sometimes he'll ask me to make a joke and i i mm-hmm. i just go by what he leads and i think it's a very mm-hmm. it's a very organic thing it's a very it's a process i'm not there yet i don't consider myself to me be a mother figure because i think i'm still learning to be a daughter sometimes you know so i think he's teaching me that uh mm-hmm. one of the things that he's been doing with me is he ta- he you know he revealed himself as a mother to me and then the next thing that he did was he revealed himself he revealed me as a child as if he open my eyes to me being a child so he's teaching me child like faith he's teaching me mm-hmm. to take him at his word trust him mm-hmm. for the little things you know go to him not thinking twice mm-hmm. or planning these things in my head he's teaching me how to be a child you know mm-hmm. so i i think it's a journey i think mm-hmm. and you know what yes sam and i are leading the church we are or he's the pastor and his wife yes all of that and you know we are seen as the spiritual parents but you know sometimes what the church needs is not a parent sometimes they need a friend so even learning yeah. to just wow. take a step back and say i might be the leader of the church or the father mm-hmm. or the mother of the church but i'm also a friend so you know because you it it does not come easy for you to share everything with your mother or father but it could be easier to talk to a friend so i think you mm-hmm. need to discern like when you need to be a mother figure or a or a father or a friend or a child even you know so yeah that's been <laughs> yeah that's kind of been my journey guys the comments are next level <laughs> oh i also want to talk about this because I, i i wrote down these points because i did not i did not want to forget you know you can you can be yeah. a leader of the church you can be the mother of the church and use that authority to abuse your children or your flock and that is something that sam and i have are really really asking god never never lord let us get to that place where we will abuse the power that we have or the authority that we have you know we never want to get to a place where we are like because i'm the leader because i'm the pastor you do this you know we have the authority to tell them what to do we when when like all the all the people that come to our church we're just eight nine of us right now none of them are married they're all single say come home uh sometimes they like you know i'm saying this openly because i love them and i know that they know my heart okay so and i know that they won't get offended at this because they know me they know my heart and i trust you guys to not feel bad about this but you know sometimes oh, <laughs> um yeah sometimes can you hear me am i audible yes yeah. so sometimes you know they'll come home and uh you know we eat together and 
they might leave their plate there or they'll put the plate in the sink and not wash it and you know sometimes there's food lying around and i'm not one of those fast aunties or like you know one of those women who will pick up your plate and wash it i will tell you to go wash it yourself because i've been taught that you know even in my family we've never been like the the women come and serve the men just sit there at the table we've always done things together so we we used to we've always taken turns like today my dad will do it tomorrow i'll do it we've always taken turns and we've all taken responsibility from the time i've mm-hmm. learned this as a kid so i'm going to do that and i i love That's that awesome. because and i will mm-hmm. raise my kids to be like that spiritual and natural you know yes, i'm going to i i want them to be, because <laughs> these boys and girls or men and women that are coming to my to our church they are someday going to be a husband and a wife they're going to be mothers and fathers and i yes. would as the mother mm-hmm. or the pastor of the church i want to mm-hmm. see them grow in every area of their lives if, even if that means taking your plate to the sink washing it cleaning the area where you were sitting you know these are little things that mm-hmm. that we can teach them but there's there's like you know the way you present it the way you use that authority that god has given you really matters i can command them to do it mm. and they will do it but they're never going to learn they're always going to feel like you know she's just she's just so bossy and i i can never connect with her but i can tell them hey can you help mm. me with this like we're a family if you see this as a family can we do this together so can we wash our own plates so mm. yes there are times where it's frustrating mm. because you have to keep saying it over and over again for them to get it but that's what you do you're not going to mm. get it in one go you're going you you'll have to keep doing it to learn that so i think i'm also learning that i'm also learning that as a child there are times when i don't wash my own plates you know on on my own like glass or whatever so even i'm learning that so i think it's a very progressive journey it's not something that happens overnight um so i don't know if i would consider myself to be uh, a perfect no i i you know why i'll tell you why i felt uh, like that for you first is this the thing that you shared is so beautiful like we have to break that uh, you know gender roles yeah. uh, kind of 100%. thing that we have grown yes. up in you know and also uh, you know one thing that i observed in you is i believe that as children uh, one uh, quality that a mother when she has it it really inspires you as children is being one with the father mm. you know with the head of the house wow. you know as when the children look at the mother yeah. honor and be one with the father yeah. it wow. naturally inspires them you know to honor so when i look at you and sam yeah. and the way you guys uh, you know love and mm-hmm. take care of this lot that god has given you i see so much mm-hmm. of oneness in you and him and there yeah. is this unity you know even though you may differ in some points and you may not agree on some things yeah. but i believe as children the biggest gift we can give yeah. be it spiritually or be it naturally mm-hmm. to our children as mothers we could be just be one with the father you know it is <laughs> so good it, it is it is of course you know difficult at times because we are so different from our spouses yeah. but for the sake of our children and the way that you do it with sam with mm-hmm. oneness i believe that in itself yeah. speaks a lot about so you as a mom yeah. and uh, mm. yeah and i think that's pretty inspirational and the last thing that i want to talk to you about is and it's very serious now even though people have been you know joking so much on the comments i don't know sneha just commented and she's saying uh, shivani is going to block all these people <laughs> from the next live So I'm like, you're doing a pretty good I job, you know. I'm not looking getting... at the comments. <laughs> you're focusing. I'm not looking at the comments. <laughs> I'm trying not to. I'm like, oh my goodness, you guys are next I'm level. I'm just looking at the number of viewers. I'm like, <laughs> is it is it going down or coming up? <laughs> I I know it's a woman conversation. Go go. And all, but uh, <laughs> even men men can also ask questions, uh, hmm. especially Betty. Uh, one of the things I I like. Uh, you both you know you and sam are a very big inspiration for me personally at the same time for both of us you know the way you put up your marriage uh, mm. the way you elevate uh, the lifestyle of marriage it's so inspiring and uh, one of the biggest quality that i loved in both of mm. you as one at the same time individually so being a shepherd for a small community hi sneha <laughs> uh, i know you you 
I think only few people, maybe 10, 15 people that you are shepherding, uh, you're discipling them. Uh, one of the things that I like the most in both of you is, you know, shepherds always uh, listen to the sheep, mm. right? So the sheep would come with their baggage and they throw the baggage and they open the baggage with the shepherd and the whole world, I will tell you, 99% of the shepherds, they operate with their sheep from the baggage point. Like when they come in, they open up their heart, whatever they are going through, whatever their past is, whatever their weaknesses are, a lot of uh, pastors, leaders, evangelists, anyone that they are equipping or discipling somebody, they start loving from that point. The first love that they have on their sheep will vanish very quickly. Mm. You know, as a human perspective, but the greatest quality that I like in both of you is you still be the same. Mm. You never have ever, I've, I've observed, okay, this is my personal observation in both of you and I'm talking it very boldly because you both are so loving, so honest, so real that you never have ever started loving from that point, but you still have loved your sheep from the very same point, mm. the birth point, I would say. You know, I love that quality in both of you. Mm. So mm. keep doing that. And one of the things I want to ask you, this is with, between me and you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get nervous. <laughs> uh, let's, let's have some Zoom fun. Call uh, after this. I don't know. This is like, uh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, ignore my head. <laughs> no, no, Sam is thinking, oh gosh, but I'm going to go. <laughs> I, I asked him to sit Sam, just in case I need to Google anything. Just do it for me. <laughs> He's around. You find him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Go uh, ahead. <laughs> okay, I I actually uh, want to ask you this one thing, okay? You have actually, I know many people have challenged me in giving, but Betty, especially you have challenged me in in the, uh, you know, scenario of giving. So I, I know we are closely associated and... Uh, I think I've uh, I've uh, raised some funds, and you are my very close friends, uh, and I I know we we are a community, and uh, many a times I have seen you responding like at the very radical way, and uh, you've you've never thought of the second thought, and you come before, and you just sow into some or the other thing, mm. and I I want to know from where have you learned this process of giving? I know it's not easy for women. You know, because uh, women are the ones who always, uh, Shivanito, you forget, she she loves to spend on that. food, but oh, not God. on everything else. I disagree, all the other things. The woman in the Bible, she broke all that she had. She she spent all her money to buy the alibi yeah. and she broke it. So I don't think it's a gender thing, but I think it's, it differs from person to person. So for me, it's not, it's not easy. I have... I, it, no, giving does not come naturally to me. In fact, we were talking about this on Sunday when we had to like give our offering. And you know, I, I decided like what I do now is not saying God speaks to me and says, so 1000, give this much money. He does not give me a number or something like that. But sometimes I, I think of a number in my mind, like I have this much money, how much of it can I give? You know, sometimes God pushes us to give the entire amount. Sometimes he pushes us to empty our bank accounts. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'll ask you to stop and not mm -hmm. give away because he gives you mm -hmm. things also to take care of yourself and your family. So sometimes you, sh you know, I think he yeah. stops you also from sowing because you need to take care of your family. Your ministry starts at home. So it's okay if you, if you don't have the, the, the finances or the means to support someone else at a particular time. Okay. So. For me, uh, what happened was I thought of an amount and I had great peace about it. It was a big amount and I was like, big amount, but more than I usually would give, okay? And I thought, wow, man, I'm going to so, so I'm going to give so much. But you know what? I went on Google, I was, I was typing out the number and I was like, there's no particular need in our church right now. I mean, anyways, everybody's at home. What's the need to give so much? And I'm rationalizing this and then I'm thinking, but wait. It's already, what's the date today? 20, 28th. So it was 26th. And I was like, 
oh, it's 26th, so in a few days, I'm going to get my salary. So oh, it's okay, it's sorted. You know, I'm so calculative in my head. But then I was like, see, you can give a huge amount of money and still not give out of the abundance that you're blessed with. You, It's not, that's why God says, like, mm. oh, not God, uh, it's written. I think Paul writes it, like, be a cheerful giver. So you can give, I, I might be wrong, I don't know who wrote that, but it's in the Bible, you know, God loves, I get you, God buddy. loves a cheerful giver. So you can give 10 rupees and still give it out of a cheerful heart, or you can give a thousand rupees and give it out of a cheerful heart. Mm -hmm. You can give everything that you own and still be upset about it. So it does not come easy to me mm -hmm. for me to answer your question. But the other thing that I'm also learning is god is really teaching me about trust these days so let me just share something you know mm. our freezer has never been forget pull our freezer has never been uh, never had so much stuff like we've never stocked our fridge or our freezer it's like our freezer if you open it it's always empty mm. except for the ice tray but this lockdown started when mm. like and there are a couple of cases in our area so they've sealed all the borders it's kind of impossible for us to get supplies but We've never had so much meat in our freezer. And I'm not saying this to like mm. brag about but anything except God's faithfulness. This was a desire that I had. God, because we like we can go mm. out and eat when, when this was not there. We would go out very often and eat. Like we, we've hung out with you guys so many times, mm. you know. But, uh, but you know, to be mm. at home under this, this day, oh my gosh, my data is almost over. So <laughs> can you do me a recharge? <laughs> I wish I could like mute or something, but he's not listening. He's right there. He's not responding. That's why I'm so excited to come live with Becky. <laughs> See, even I'm so excited to come. What? I'm not connected. I can't trust you. <laughs> I have 475 MB left. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, please. So, yeah, so God is really teaching me about trust. Like he's, he's even fulfilling like the little desires. I'm not looking at the comments. He's looking, like, he's looking at the comments. It seems he is someone who is so good. Like he'll fulfill even your smallest of desires. So if I want fish, I'm going to ask God for fish and he's going to give it to me. That's all. I'm just going to trust him for that. Same with finances. It's difficult for me to just completely trust in, even though I don't have to spend money on anything during this lockdown my husband is the one doing it, but it still becomes difficult mm -hmm. sometimes for me to give, you know, but once you get that realization that you're already blessed, that he is faithful, that he'll give you the desires of your heart, you know, I think it, it's mm -hmm. a process. That's also a journey. It does not come all of a sudden. It's, it comes with practice. It comes with yeah. knowing that God is good, you know, trusting him. It comes with, yeah, I think it comes, it happens over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, a lot of people have sowed into mm -hmm. our lives. That's, you know, including you guys. You guys have sown into our lives. I'm not, it does not have to always be, you know, money or finances. There are like so many ways to sow into someone's life. And you guys have yeah. definitely taught us that. Betty, you there? <clears throat> You've taught us what living look like. Can you hear me? Okay. Am I back? We just lost, lost you a bit in between. So you have like three, four minutes more to talk because this is the last thing that I want to ask you. Do you have that much oh, no. connection with you? The data? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. You I do? do? Yes. Okay. So finally, I just want to know from you, what do you feel, according to you, what do you feel is the greatest need of the church right now um, in this scenario that we are in? This is actually an easy question to answer because it was our topic of discussion yesterday during our, like we have the Zoom call every evening with our church friends. So this was something that we discussed. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, you know, genuine relationships. So I know it's, it sounds like a very simple thing, but it's something that I think the church really needs. 
i think we need to be very intentional about yeah. how like you know about relationships and being genuine about it so i also feel like i was talking to a friend recently and i was working on a song for nation and it's it's you know not very christian and i was like wow let's like for a christian for for a christian community to write, write a song that the whole nation can sing despite what religion you like background you come from i think the church needs to open its doors for people of any faith to feel comfortable from being genuine it we're not doing this to like you know i think when the minute you start seeing a person uh, as someone you need to save or someone that needs to come to christ i think you've lost it right there because i think it needs mm-hmm. to start from you know if if it comes from a place of love and acceptance mm-hmm. despite their background despite what mm-hmm. they're going through despite their baggage whatever it is you'll be able to accept them so if you if you start to love with an agenda that's something also that i i really struggle with and i i really try hard not to do like loving with an agenda i don't want i don't want to text someone just to uh ask them to go to church or ask if they've gone to church i want to text them because i love them because i care about them so i think that's one of the things that the church really needs like we need to be we need to learn to be vulnerable with each other uh maybe maybe not with everybody in your church but at least with the people that god brings into your life and you know if you're at least among the leaders or if you're connected to a, a, a particular group or something i think you need to learn we need to learn to be vulnerable we need to learn to be genuine to be real about our struggles especially yeah. pastors and leaders because we think that we need to keep it together we need to um you know because we need to make space for all the people who are going through things but we are just as human we're just as you know we're struggling just as much as the next person so it's okay sometimes to let your guard down and say guys i'm also struggling with the same thing or i this is what you know i had a fight with my husband yesterday it's okay to to be in that place mm-hmm. you know to say that mm-hmm. yeah yeah i hope that answered mm-hmm. the question that's that's amazing i remember i remember uh, reading one of the quotes from christine gain sometime you know people admire your strengths but they connect with your weaknesses 100% yeah and somewhere you know we have uh, in a way grown up looking at our elders and the people that who you know by god's grace we have a uh, you know i don't know maybe fathers and mothers some of them putting up a standard before us mm-hmm. not you know we feel that okay i can never yeah. be as holy yeah. as them i can never be as good as them so it's so important today to be vulnerable <laughs> so that people can understand that yes church is a place where i can belong this is a place where i can go because people are real over here so that's amazing then just imagine if the way the adulteress went uh to the uh, to simon's home and just wept before jesus mm-hmm. and it, jesus would have just said hey you why are you going through this you know i i'm the almighty god and i am with you if he would have belittled her pain and her tragedy or whatever she was going through it would have, would have been very hard hard for Maybe him for her sorry to connect with him so it's like can you hear me i could i think my internet went off in between wait i'm back yeah it's just and well not telling the people they suffering whatever they are going through yeah so <laughs> i don't know so we have finally made it to the end despite of everybody's Ooh, such good students you guys are such <laughs> <laughs> i'm so thankful betty thank you for saying yes to this all the people that have dropped in amazing comments thank you so much for keeping us entertained but we did not lose our focus 
<laughs> no, we did not. And if in case you were very uh, are spiritual and holy enough, <laughs> please go and check out the whole conversation on YouTube. I will be uploading it by tomorrow. So I'm so blessed by this. I'm so glad we did this. So thankful, Betty. Yeah. And thank you, Sam, for not coming in <laughs> because I knew Sam would have come in. Our conversation would have gone past three. Yeah. <laughs> this what? was less. Like I, I think I was more stressed before this started, but I think the minute I saw you and took a deep, deep breath, it was fine. This was fun. Yeah. Was fun. Thank you for <laughs> checking yes. me. Admit it, Betty. I was the one who encouraged you. Hundred percent. Because you all glory and honor to Finny. <laughs> yeah. Finny, bye. Finny, bye.